Hi, so let's look in this video at the life cycle hypothesis. This was developed by Modigliani and it won him a Nobel Prize, so it must be pretty good. So what do we what assumptions do we make in this hypothesis? Well, he says that suppose we live for 70 years, for example, it seems pretty reasonable, then we consume and we have income in these periods and we can borrow and save just as we could do in the two period model we've already looked at. So we have budget constraints in period one where we have income which is equal to how much we consume plus anything we save for period two. And then in period two we have another budget constraint which is the our income in period two plus anything that was saved from period one multiplied by the interest rate and that is equal to any consumption we do in period two plus anything we save for period three and we can we can keep doing this for every period where each period's consumption depends on the income in that period plus what we have saved from the period before and what we save for the period after uh, so we can go on, and that will just involve changing changing the numbers in this period 2 budget constraint to 3, 4, 5, and so on, until we get to our final period, which is our 70th year of life, where we have income of, at period 70, plus what we've saved from the previous period, for period 70, multiplied by the interest rate, and that is equal to our consumption in period 70 plus any savings we have for period 71. However, an assumption that Modigliani made here was that this savings for period 71 we are going to set equal to zero. So we don't care about future gener future generations. We don't we don't give uh, any bequests or any inheritance to people after us. So we, we can't save income into the next period. So what we want to do with our consumption, the final period, is just spend all of our remaining money such that we don't have anything left. And we, we know we're going to live for 70 years, so we may as well have a big fancy final year and just blow all our money, have a big party. So what we can do with these, what we want to do with all these 70 different budget constraints. We have a budget constraint for every period that we're in. Uh, what we want to do with them is combine them so that we have one one common intertemporal budget constraint. And in a previous video in this series, we did that with just two periods. And it kind of uses a very similar logic if we're combining 70 years worth of stuff. So we're going to do that. You should notice that what we have is we have a B2 in the period 1 budget constraint and we have a B2 in the period 2 budget constraint. And this follows through in a similar way through all 70 budget constraints that say in, in the period 2 budget constraint we have a B3 and if we were to write out the um, period 3 budget constraint it would look if my pen would work, equal C3 plus B4. Again, sorry, the pen is not working very well. But we see that, again, we can, we can substitute across budget constraints and substitute into another. But what we're going to do is we're going to do, well, 70 or maybe 69 substitutions uh, in order to combine 70 equations into one. And so I won't go over the exact. Well, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna do this uh, substitution, and you'll never. You'll never need to do all these by hand. You just need to know the logic of it. So, and it should make sense how we get to the final answer. So by doing this, what we might call an iterated substitution of the budget constraints into each other, we get a new intertemporal budget constraint, but for 70 periods which will be y1 plus y2, but we get the present value of y2, and we have loads and loads of terms until we get to the end where we have y70, which is over 1 plus r raised to the power of 69, 
and this is equal to C1 plus C2, 1 plus R plus, we have a load more consumption terms for consumption in each period, and then we get the final period, consumption in period 70, divided by 1 plus R to the power of 69. And again, as we had in our two period model, we have our budget constraint is present value income. Again, the pen is not working. Income is equal to present value consumption. And so when, when we're thinking about period 70 consumption and period 70 income, we're thinking of consumption 70 years in the future because we're currently in time period one. So we have to discount this by the interest rate raised to the power of 69 periods into the future. And we just assume a constant interest rate here. Obviously, in reality, we're not sure exactly how, how at what rate we're gonna to have to discount this, but we're just gonna assume that we can discount using compound interest and just divide by one plus R to the power of the 69 periods in the future this is. So that's that's our general form of our intertemporal budget constraint, but there are a few more assumptions that Modigliani makes in his life cycle hypothesis. So we have income, but it is we only have income in periods, which we'll call periods T, from 1 through to 64, and at time 64 we retire. So if we look in our budget constraint, this Y70 is actually now equal to zero because we don't have any income in our final period, and the same is true for Y69, Y68, 67, and so on. We only have income in times 1 to 64, and th this does make it a little bit more realistic. We do have a retirement age. Uh, it varies from country to country. And in the past, it may have been about 64. It keeps going up and up as life expectancies increase. But let's just assume that this person works until they're 64. So they have income in period 64. Now, now if we think about what our consumption should be, what, what would happen if we just consume in each period what we earn in each period? So our consumption in time period t is equal to our income in period t, well that means once we reach peer time period 64 we have exhausted all of our income and we now have zero left for spending in periods consumption in period 65, 66, 67 until 70. We can't consume anything in those periods so Obviously, we don't want to consume our income. What we actually do is consumption smoothing. Consumption smoothing, which we talked about a little bit in the previous video, but we have to consume less than our income in each period. If we, if we earn a thousand pounds today and we're gonna to retire tomorrow, we, we can't spend all 1,000 pounds because well, we need, we need to save some money for our retirement. And that's, that's sort of the thought process behind this life cycle hypothesis is that we smooth our consumption. Even in period one, uh, we want to be saving some of that money for future. And we can think of that as putting money into a pension or putting it into a savings account. And it replicates reality, at least to some extent. So in order to get a bit more intuition about how all of this looks, we can draw a diagram where on the y-axis we just have our income, our consumption, and our wealth at each period, and on the x-axis we have time. So let's think about it. If we first look at our income, we, we have some sort of income, which we'll draw by this blue dotted line, and we have income throughout our life until we reach the age of 64 and we retire, and we just no longer earn any income. So that will go straight to zero, and we have a curve that looks something like that at time equals 64. And so, so how, but we live till we're 70, if we use green to 
show that we we need to be consuming until we're 70 and we want to smooth out our consumption we we don't have let's assume that we don't have any preference for when when we consume our income so we just want to have constant consumption throughout our lives which intuitively makes a bit of sense we just want to spread it out ideally we just want to be able to can have have food have clothing have housing for our whole lives and we don't care too much about having them at a certain age so we just spread consumption but so in the early years of our life our consumption has to be below income so that allows us to save some of that income for once we reach the age of 64 and we retire we can still keep consuming at the same rate until we turn 70 and we unfortunately pass away and and then our consumption goes to zero because we are no longer around to consume anything but so this is the sort of idea we get with the life cycle hypothesis is that we're planning well into the future and we we are smoothing knowing that we want to keep this exact same consumption even after we retire and i'm going to draw a final curve which is our wealth curve and this will just give what our savings are throughout our lifetimes so we start with zero savings we don't get any inheritance and in the early part of our life, our income is higher than what we're consuming, so our wealth curve is increasing. It's increasing until we stop earning, but we continue consuming, so our wealth quickly goes down. And ideally, what we want is our wealth to be zero at age of 70, because if we don't spend all our money, that's just going to go to waste. There's no inheritance. We don't get any utility from giving anyone else our wealth when we pass away. So that's what we that's what we do we want zero wealth when we pass away to maximize our utility during our life so let's just label these curves hopefully those have been fairly explained and we'll just add on this so so time between our lifetime until we're 64 we work and for these final six years, these are our retirement where we don't have to work and we just spend the savings we learned through our lives. So what happens if we if we say when we win a raffle or something when we're 30, let's imagine we're 30, and our income, we get a one-time increase in income and we just gain, let's say, a thousand pounds at t equals 30. Do we do we splash out and buy, buy I don't know, buy a new fancy jacket or whatever costs a thousand pounds in period thirty? No. What this life cycle hypothesis says is that we're going to spread that out over the remainder of our life, which we'll have forty more years because we live till seventy. So we're going to spread that one thousand over forty years, and such that we're just spending twenty five pounds for every year. Nothing nothing too crazy um, per year that's right per year there uh, and so this marginal propensity to consume is much less than one we earn we earn a thousand pounds but we don't spend it all in fact our marginal propensity to consume is going to be one over how many how many years we have left so we have we have 40 years left so each year we're going to spend one over 40 of our windfall of income uh, however if we if we get win a thousand pounds when we're 69 years old then obviously we only have one year left so we're going to be spending all of it because we don't want to have any money when we die so if we receive money when we're 69 our marginal propensity to consume will be one otherwise it it depends how how old we are how much of it we're going to spend year on year so that's the life cycle hypothesis. So that will wrap up this video. In the next video, we'll be looking at the permanent income hypothesis. So check out the playlist for that and for the previous videos. Make sure to subscribe for future videos and to drop a like on this one if it was at all useful.